Hey everyone, Duke Nugget 3D here with another mask to review in my collection, and today I have for you this American M1A2 Army Service Mask. This one is in fairly bad condition. Before I get into the history here, I actually bought this off of uh, Older Masks Are Best. I don't know if he's still doing videos on his channel, I doubt it at this point, but I'm going to link it anyways for you to consider. Um, but anyhow, yeah, I bought I bought this off of him just as a face piece, and I was really just intending to dick around with it and maybe scrap it for spare parts, but I don't know at this point. I might try to restore it, I might not at this point. Uh, I, again, not too sure, uh, but for the time being, I'm going to display it as a kit just to give you guys what an idea of what this kit was like. However, there are a few inaccuracies that I will point out in just a moment. Anyhow, the M1A2 is a pretty typical, it's probably the most common variant of the M1 series service masks because it was the um, variant that was pretty much, this was like the last transitional variant of the first generation service masks in that it was still a chin seam um, flat sheet rubber face piece, but the fact is, is that it incorporated a lot of principles that were seen in the second generation service masks, such as a universal size, whereas previous masks had uh, used a numeric sizing system, and then also the arrangement of the head harness, etc. Those are the main differences between the, um, the M1A2 and the M1A1, which I actually have my M1A1 out to compare it to. As you can see, the M1A1 has a slightly different arrangement for the uh, buckle tabs, whereas these sort of stop short on the forehead and cheek straps, whereas the M1A2s are much longer and extend out further into the face piece, and the arrangement and fit is much different. And then you can also see, whereas the M1A1 has a numeric sizing system, where this one is a size 2 for, I believe, medium, uh, this one is just a universal uh, one size fits most size. And that is a tradition that would last well into the 1950s with American gas mask design. Um, even though Universal is really more like a, a medium to sometimes small size, but I digress. Um, really, not that much is different between the M1A1 and M1A2, other than the cut and fit of the face piece and its harness hardware. Um, but other than that, all the hardware is standard. And uh, as you can see, this one is in much worse condition. Uh, this one's very worse for it. You can actually see how the lens is completely cracked, although it's still intact. Um, but... Anyhow, it is missing a lot of hardware. Um, as I said, I bought this as just a face piece. And this is probably, again, going back into the history again, these were probably the oldest masks in service uh, with the U.S. during World War II because the M1A2 lasted well into 1944 before it was officially retired. I think at that point it was mostly just being used as a backup reserve issue mask because they produced a shit ton of these before World War II began and they only had a limited supply of uh, M2s, M3s, and M4s to go around at the beginning of World War II. So a lot of these were reissued at the beginning half of World War II and probably by 1944 these were just reserved for special purpose uses. I could be very wrong on that, but that's what I believe was the case for these, because I really don't see a lot of, I wouldn't, I couldn't really imagine a lot of standard uh, infantry guys, just a lot of grunts just going around in Europe carrying these fucking things. Um, but anyhow, um, so this kit is completely pieced together out of random parts in my collection. This M2 hose, the, the M1A2 did use an M2 hose, but they were typically the stockinette covered ones. Um, they did use the Class B gray M2 hoses for the gray stockinette M1A2 face pieces, but this is an early M1A2 where it uses black rubber and a khaki stockinette. Um, that being said, I have actually seen examples of M1, of early sto uh, khaki stockinette M1A2s like this, where they had um, M2 hoses that were made out of black rubber, but did not have a stockinette coating. So this setup is not entirely inaccurate, it's just I've never personally seen an example of a gray stockinette M1A2 where it used a Class B gray rubber M2 hose. Anyhow, the uh, carrier that I have with it is actually the accurate carrier this time. I've had this carrier for a while, but I didn't really have any masks that went with it. This is an M4 carrier, not the later M4A1 carrier, uh, which is more common with masks like the M2 service, the M3 diaphragm series, so on and so forth. Um, these are much earlier and actually are designated for the M1A2 and possibly the M1A1, uh, although it's more common to see those with M3 carriers. Uh, but anyways, uh, you, the way you can tell it's for an M1A or M1A2 here is that it is just stamped US with the chemical core insignia and then a uh, U for universal. So this is the carrier that would have been issued with the M1A2, at least these early ones. Uh, could have been the later ones as well. I don't think they really changed the material all that much when they made the transition to Class B Gray. Um, not really too much to see. You can see the M4 marking, the lot number, etc. 
and there's an anti-dimming uh, stick inside, which I'm not going to remove because I've probably showed it off in other videos. Now onto the kit itself, which nothing is wired and taped in place, so I can just easily break this down to show it off for you guys. So here we have, uh, first off, the M9A1 canister. This one's the worst one in my collection, so I naturally put it with the worst mask in my World War II collection. Um, so pretty typical heavyweight style canister. These were very common. Uh, I don't believe uh, any of the earlier canisters like the M4 or the uh, just any of those earlier M1 series canisters were, were used all that much in early World War II. There could be some examples, but for the most part, you're mostly going to see M9A1s. The M2 hose is also uh, very basic. Not really much to say about it. It's just a 27 inch uh, hose. Very standard. Now onto the face piece itself, which, again, not too much to talk about. I've already pretty much covered the basics of the thing, but uh, I guess I could show you the interior and some of the hardware differences from the M1A1. So it does use the standard M2 harness. Uh, this would later be updated as the M2A1 for the M3 diaphragm series, which uh, the main difference between the M2 harness and the M2A1 is that the M2A1 uh, was made out of a canvas, had a canvas head pad, whereas this one has a felt and cotton head pad. Um, the M2A1s are also typically made out of either Class B gray or black um, webbing material. Uh, not too much to say about this. This harness has been repaired, presumably by older masks, because you can see there's a part where the harness originally broke off and it's just been loosely sewn back into place. So, again, not don't really hold any real value to this mask. I mostly bought it for parts and for dicking around with. So, uh, it is missing the M2 flutter valve on the bottom here, and the M1A2s would more than likely use the, the M2 valve rather than the M1 valve. Uh, which my M1A1 does have an M1 valve, not an M2. Uh, the main difference between the M1 and M2 flutter valves is that the M1s were a sort of multi-layer construction where it was several sheets of rubber that were vulcanized together, whereas the M2 was just solidly molded. Um, not really much to say about that. Uh, you can get a close-up of the markings on the top of the face piece, and again, I apologize for the camera uh, creating a shadow on everything here, but... And you can see U.S. and the universal size, and not really too much else to see. There is a very faint lot number on the chin, but it's probably indecipherable on camera at this point. And you got the flutter valve guard and the angle tube assembly. Not really much else to say about that. I'll move on to the interior, and the interior is okay-ish, but it's this mask is beginning to fall apart around the uh, the harness tab patches, and as you can see, the upper. Uh, right harness tab here is just completely worn away and it's just being held on by the stockinette so I got to do something about that um, but anyways you can see the interior here it's quite dirty I haven't really cleaned this at all you can see the butterfly type deflectors which are actually the later ones and I'll get my M1A1 here to compare it to because the earlier ones are much larger much more bulbous um, and also you can see how it's made out of black rubber whereas the earlier M1A1 is a red brown gum rubber and uh Lenses are virtually the same, same hardware, same and all that, but as you can see, the M1A1's uh, deflectors are much larger, much more bulbous, and much more intrusive, whereas the M1A2's are slightly more subdued, more refined in their molding. Uh, not really much to say about that. I assume that the M1A1's would have used these later deflectors at some point, but considering even though this is an earlier M1, or a later M1A1 from 1935, um, the, this one is still using the earlier deflectors that would have been seen on the original M1 service mask. Um, anyway, anyhow, I digress. That's about all there is to say about this mask. Uh, I, again, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to restore it or repair it at all. Uh, and again, mostly just bought it for parts, but just wanted to show it off to you guys since I have not. I need to cover a lot more older masks like this. So, that being said, uh, I have a few projects in uh, in uh, progress. So. I'll keep you guys posted on those when I do. Um, but that being said, I'm Duke New 3D. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below, and I'll see you all later.